Let's start by opening up this desktop computer, focusing on the CPU and taking a look at what's inside. Here we have an integrated circuit, or die, which we'll refer to as a chip. This chip has 24 cores, a memory controller, a graphics processor, and many other sections. Within one of the cores, we can see its block diagram and the various elements. Zooming in on this multiply block, we find a layout of 44,000 transistors that physically execute 32-bit multiplication and constitute just 0.00017% of the overall 26 billion transistors in the CPU. Zooming in even further, we see layers of metal wires, or interconnects, and at the very bottom are the transistors that form the basic logic gates. Note that these layers of metal interconnects aren't floating, but rather the empty space that you see is filled with insulating materials, thus providing structure and preventing the metal wire layers from touching. Furthermore, here we're only showing the transistors at the bottom and five layers of metal interconnects, with vias traveling vertically between the layers. In actuality, there are a total of 17 metal layers of wires in the CPU, and each successive set of levels uses larger and larger interconnects. Clearly, the transistors are incredibly small. Here's a mitochondria, a dust particle, and a human hair for size comparisons. Now that you have a sense of what the transistors and labyrinth of metal interconnects look like, let's explore how they're manufactured. Let's run through the complete set of steps used to manufacture a single metal interconnect layer. First, a layer of insulating silicon dioxide is deposited onto the wafer. Next, photoresist is spread across the surface and the wafer is sent through a soft bake to remove the solvent. The wafer then travels to the photolithography tool, where the design from the photo mask is transferred to each of the chips on the wafer by weakening the areas of photoresist hit by the light. The wafer next goes to the developer to wash away the sections that were hit by the light from the lithography tool, and then through a hard bake to harden the remaining photoresist. With the mask layer built, the wafer goes to an etching tool, where a plasma etcher removes a vertical column through the exposed silicon dioxide until it reaches the previous layer's metal vias. Next, the wafer is sent to a photoresist stripper, where the mask layer is removed. The wafer then travels to a physical vapor deposition tool, where a sequence of metals fills in the exposed pattern and coats the wafer in metal. Finally, the wafer is sent to a chemical mechanical planarization tool where the metal is ground down so that all that remains is a flat layer of insulating silicon dioxide and conductive copper interconnects that match the pattern from the photo mask. A single metal layer is now completed and the wafer is ready for the next cycle to begin where insulating silicon dioxide in the vias will be added. The completed wafer is sent to a separate building where each of the CPUs undergoes rigorous testing to figure out if it works as intended. If a CPU works, that's great. But frequently, a particle or photo mass defect has damaged a section of the integrated circuit, rendering that section defective. These semi-functional circuits are then categorized or binned based on what still works. These Intel 13th Gen processors are sold as an i9, i7, i5, or i3, depending on how many cores are functional with different product lines of CPUs whose onboard integrated graphics sections are defective. These wafers are transported to another building where the chips are cut out using a laser, flipped over, and placed on an interposer, which distributes the connection points to a printed circuit board, while a protective heat conductive cover is placed on the back side. The printed circuit board holds the landing grid array that interfaces with the motherboard, as well as various electrical components. Next, an integrated heat spreader is mounted on top, and the entire assembly is tested one last time before being packaged for sale. Finally, the CPU is now ready to be mounted onto the motherboard and installed into your desktop computer.